I'm a professor at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and I'm a researcher at the Las Cumbres Observatory. I study supernovae, these new things called kilonovae. I've worked on searching for extraterrestrial life. I've worked on big galaxies, exploding stars, and cosmology, figuring out the origins of the universe, those kinds of things. You know, I was a normal kid. I was born on the west side of Jacksonville here. Not a rich family at all. My parents were very young. We had no money at all. And uh, I just went to the public school system. And I just started studying. Kids are learning robotics. And I wish I had the chance to learn more robotics in school because it actually applies to my research very directly. Um, we have a network of telescopes that are placed all around the world that are robotic. And that allows us to do things we've never been able to do before. And we found new kinds of explosions out there in the universe that we had no idea about. One of them is a, is a kilonova. What was it about your childhood that allowed you to be so curious and pursue the things that were important to you and determine your own destiny? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just, uh, you know, they were uh, realized different things that I had a passion about and encouraged it. So when I, when I was young, I, I thought I, you know, I would do art and stuff like that. Took me a lot to, to a lot of art classes. And so, you know, I did a whole bunch of that and that served me well in, helping with all kinds of things you know then i got into science and things like that and they you know as you saw i got to go to the space things i got to go to epcot i got to oh, go all these places and just encouraged all of that so i think it's just not telling your kids what to do and when they get excited about something helping them out and just being there and talking to them and you know really participating in their life you know when i went to school this was not in the textbooks, this dark energy. I, you know, I helped to, to discover this stuff. It's amazing that you, you, you that as a just normal kind of average everyday person, you can find out that a bunch of the universe is missing. You get this amazing rush when you find out something new that nobody on earth has ever done before. And, and somebody like me, just a, just a little kid, you know, that's, I'm no different than anybody else, I can find out something no human has ever known. It's not a bunch of, of nerdy guys in lab coats, it's a whole, whole bunch of you know, diverse array of people from all around the world finding out new cool stuff about the universe. It's incredible, you can change the world from just your brain. All right, this is my dad's prerogative here. He has a question, which is, when you're seeing back in time, how does this work? And you're seeing stuff that may not exist. Yes, that is true. When we're seeing these very distant supernovae, some of the ones I showed are 10 billion years old. And so when that light came, started coming to us, there was no Earth, there was no sun, there was a different star here. And then uh, that star died. Our star got created, our Earth got created. We invented telescopes and pointed them just in time to see these photons that have been traveling for 10 billion years. That's happening all over when you look at things in distant galaxies. There's a big misconception that that's happening in stars that you see in the sky. Those, all the stars you see in the sky are in our galaxy. Those are only like a few light years away, maybe tens or hundreds or thousands of light years away. But when we're seeing things in other galaxies, it may be millions of years ago or billions of years ago watching Star Wars as a little kid, and that's what really got me into science. I just got passionate about astronomy, and I just followed it, and you know, I built a path for myself. But everybody's gotta find their own path. You know, I, I wanted to be an astronaut, but then I'm actually too tall to be an astronaut. So I thought, well, I will study science from the ground, and uh, it, study space stuff, study astronomy. So if, if you just told me, okay, uh, you're gonna go be an expert on supernovae. I wouldn't have known where to begin as a kid. There are people who will help you at every step. There are teachers, professors, uh, mentors, and you go to those people and you say, well, what, what should I do? And you get advice from people and they tell you, hey, if you wanna succeed in this area, here's this problem that you know I don't know the answer to. A professor will say, I don't know the answer to this problem, but I got a kind of an idea of how to get to the solution, but you're gonna figure it out. Don't be afraid to fail, because you learn from it. And then you get better and better and better over time. And so it's just problem solving skills. That's all you're really learning in grad school. It's not 
I mean, you sure you learned some fancy math, sure you learned some programming, but what you're really learning is to say, take a problem and get to the answer it, with every method you can. Sometimes what I do is uh, tedious every day to day. You know, I've got to write this computer code. I've got to review this paper. I've got to, you know, I don't know, slog through something that, that I don't feel like doing. Whenever I face some kind of barrier like that, I, I have to take a step back and say, what's the big picture here? Remembering that end goal keeps me excited and then, and then allows me to get through whatever little tedious thing that I'm working on. You're not born knowing it, you're not gonna learn it in a day. You know, it takes years to develop this kind of knowledge because it's just about going really deep on a subject. And that's just about passion. That's about you finding something that you like. And if you're following your passion, what you're passionate about, you're gonna do more than anybody else has ever done. And then you're gonna be the expert. I know something very specific about astronomy, but I didn't know that in high school. I just learned the skills in high school to be able to succeed later. I can tell you like where I think the next big discoveries are going to happen, but they almost always happen in unexpected areas. To really be a master of some subject, you really have to go deep into a certain subject and really learn something that nobody's ever known before. That's the subject matter. What you also need to do is um, be, be sort of broad in your interests and, and your, some of your abilities. And so you need to be able to communicate with people very well. Most of what I do is not math or programming, it's communicating. And so a huge amount of it is just learning how to, to work with people. And, 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 and come together as a group. And that's not always easy because people have different personalities. And so you just have to learn to be friendly, for example. I mean, that's a huge part of it. You also need to have team building. You know, you need to, sometimes you have to have a, a diverse team to get a project done. And so maybe one person is not a very good communicator and they just program, but they're amazing at it. Well, get, put, the, put them on the team. Somebody else is really good at uh, public speaking and they can go and talk about the results. We'll get them on the team. Somebody else knows how to use this satellite and we'll put them on the team. Somebody else is a great artist and they help you make your presentations and, and build your skills. We have people that help us write press releases and things like that. And so there's room for all kinds of different talents. Um, but you just have to come together and, and work together. And so some of what we also do is just learn how to work together. You, you have to learn to communicate and find different people that do different things. You learn to communicate with people of different cultures, but also find people that all have all different backgrounds and skills. So I try to tell people, be friendly. That's super important because a lot of your opportunities are gonna come from places you didn't know. From you make a connection, you meet somebody and they say, I've got a project I'm working on and I think you'd be great for it. And then you start working together on something new and you get into a new area you didn't even know you were interested in from the beginning. And then being friendly is always going to help you on just every aspect of life and uh, you know like just being able to go out and tell people about your work and make connections with people. And so that's a skill that not, I don't think we teach enough of, is just how to work in a group, how to, to be nice to people. So 
What you kids are learning today in robotics is a great skill set to be learning. You're learning how to work together in teams. You're learning how to do these technical challenges. And you're learning cooperation and competition. And this is the essence of science. These are the exact kinds of things I do every day as an astronomer. These skills will be useful in kind of anything you want to do. So now I want to teach that to the next generation. All these skills that I've learned over sometimes failing, some, sometimes by a mentor teaching me these things, and now I want to teach that to the next generation as well. I don't know, I get excited about it. I get to use billion dollar equipment that like, <laughs> the entire Earth created out of like, it's like a natural wonder. Like all the people on Earth came together to make this amazing thing and they let me use it. I mean, that's insane. Like how can you not be excited about that? And then thank you everybody and I'll, I'll talk to you in a bit.